Hello, my name is Jim Huddy. I'm a GP in Perranporth in Cornwall. I'm Cornwall CCG Clinical Lead for Chronic Pain. This is a presentation of our project called Cornwall's Opioid Strategy, the Demedicalisation of Chronic Pain. And this will be presented at the uh, Cornish GP locality meetings in the summer of 2017. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the background of this project. I work at the Royal Cornwall Hospital and uh, I've been attending meetings with three other consultants for the last couple of years, Dr Keith Mitchell, consultant in pain medicine, Adrian Flynn, a consultant in liaison psychiatry, and Paul Thornton, who's a gastroenterologist. And we've been working in the first instance on some of the um, challenging inpatients who have prolonged admissions with uh, high doses of opiate prescribing. This slide demonstrates the, uh, the real improvements in uh, the doses of strong opioid medications that have been administered on some of the wards during this project. This graph shows the take-home message, which is of a, a massive 75% reduction in the use of intravenous morphine on the gastroenterology ward. We followed up this work by writing uh, uh, an opioid management plan which has information for patients and prescribers and also a, a section which is a signed contract when initiating opioids to, uh, to em empower the prescriber not to get into difficulties with ever-increasing doses. So we then thought, well if we're going to do this, why not do it uh, across the whole of healthcare in Cornwall? And so we thought that we would rewrite the referral management service guidelines for the management of chronic pain. Why do we think this is important? Well, I'm sure I don't need to tell you much about the crisis of opioids that's occurring in America. Tens of millions of people are regular users of prescribed opioid medications. Uh, a large percentage of them get into problems of dependence and unfortunately uh, tens of thousands of people die every year from overdose. What's the situation in the UK? Well, it's not anywhere near as severe, but there are some worrying trends. How much pain have we got? This is a systematic review of studies looking at prevalence from last year, and it estimated that 35 to 50 percent of the adult population of the UK suffered from pain of some description, and 10 to 14 percent had it moderately to severely disabling, increasing prevalence with age and more common in females. How much prescribing have we got? Well, in 2015 there were 16 million prescriptions for opioids in the UK, to the tune of £200 million. Uh, this study shows a four and a half fold increase in prescribing from 2000 to 2010. I think really interestingly only 12% of these had a cancer diagnosis, so the majority of this would appear to be for chronic non-cancer pain. So we know we've got two problems, there's a lot of pain and there's a lot of prescribing. Let's have a look at the evidence for opioids in the treatment of chronic pain. I was at the British Pain Society conference a couple of months ago and the first plenary session was by this guy, Dr Frank Parecker, who really has a very deep understanding of chronic non-cancer pain, the physiology, he's a researcher in the physiology of it, but he understands the politics and the demographics. And he described the eruption of opioids in the 1990s for chronic pain as a disaster. This is a well-respected systematic review from 2015 about the long-term risks and benefits of opioids for chronic pain. Um, interestingly, there's no randomised controlled trials longer than three months, and the shorter trials, which can show benefit, are of a very flawed methodology, often where patients who drop out because of side effects get included as a therapeutic success. So from observational studies, the uh, to quote in the conclusion, there is no evidence of effectiveness of long-term opioid therapy for improving chronic pain and function. The risks are clear, abuse, dependence, overdose, death. ED and hospital admissions, physiologically there's fractures, heart attacks, endocrine and sexual dysfunction, and higher doses suggest higher risk. So my understanding of the summary of the evidence for opioids is that it's like homeopathy with a gun. 
And I'm going to follow up this slightly disparaging statement with a caution. Opiophobia is the phenomenon where doctors are phobic about prescribing opioids in chronic pain. It was one of the drivers, actually, of the crisis that we've got at the moment, is that the industry um, was accusing the medical profession of under-treating pain. Look, what we do know is that some treatments help some people, homeopathy included, and some patients with chronic pain do benefit from strong opioid treatments. So we've got to be careful about denying patients the chance of benefit but please just be very careful and if the risks appear to be outweighing the benefits then stop the stuff. So as we know we've got two problems, there's the pain and then there's the prescribing and regarding problem number one, the pain, very very common question is well if we don't prescribe and give drugs then what do we do? What are the decent alternatives for patients who come and see us with chronic pain? Well it turns out that there's a very wholesome and evidence-based and effective alternative to pharmacotherapy for chronic pain, and that's self-management, defined as a single or combination of approaches, either learned or taught, to enable patients to minimise the impact of their pain on everyday life. So what we need to do is we need to teach patients self-management and give them what they need. What's the evidence behind it? Well, actually, there's decades of evidence behind this. Um, but probably best summed up by the fact that it is quite prominent in the uh, Scottish SIGN guidelines for chronic pain management, and they give it a grade C evidence of benefit, which is, uh, which is quite good in a, in a non-quantitative type of intervention like this. So we've got a bit of an assumption coming up here, but we think it's fairly reasonable. We know that Higher opioid prescribing is associated with higher risk, and we know that opioids are rarely clinically beneficial in chronic pain. So we believe that lower prescribing should translate into safer, healthier, happier patients, and also happier care services and commissioners. So what are we going to do about it? Well, we're introducing Cornwall's opioid strategy, the demedicalization of chronic pain. So this is the challenge. Cornwall's quite a heavy prescriber of opioid analgesics with an annual spend of £3.3 .3 million. And we're about on about the 70th centile if you look at CCGs in the UK. So what's the plan? Well, firstly, regarding the pain, we need to write information for patients, which we've done. Secondly, regarding the prescribing, we need to write information for clinicians, which we've done. We need to publish these on a trusted local website, and I'll take you through all of this in detail, which we've done. Then the marketing drive to GPs to promote self-management and to rationalise prescription. Well, this is what we're doing right now. This is why you're listening to this. Uh, and lastly, we need to incentivise GPs to engage in the programme and monitor the data. And the prescribing team are being uh, brilliant in their analysis of all of this. And then we need to learn what we can learn and share methodologies to help others. Firstly, information for patients. This is written in a Word document. It's an interactive Word document with audio versions available describing how to understand the chronic, uh, the concepts of chronic pain um, in, the, in the modern sort of format, ideas about pacing and acceptance uh, and coping strategies for everyday life, including uh, benefits of physical exercise and benefits of emotional mindfulness type um, treatments. There's some details about medications and websites uh, to help through everyday uh, problems. The expert patient program is mentioned and uh, finally some information about opioids and how to wean opioids if uh, there's a situation with your doctor where we feel that's appropriate. Similarly, we've written information for clinicians. Similarly, it's in the format of a downloadable Word document that takes you through the concepts of self-management, what it's like to be a doctor, what it's like to be a patient. Some of our uh, colleagues are here in video format um, explaining the risks of opioids, the opioid trial. If you're going to try some, uh, some treatment, we have sections on neuropathic pain and what medications can be useful there, uh, a little bit about paracetamol, and then some questions and answers. I've tried to uh, think of all the questions that GPs might have about our project 
and uh, there's some stuff here, some top tips for GPs, written by a GP with a special interest, the uh, opioid strategy, along the lines of what I'm talking about at the moment, uh, some references, and then a, a rather sad and harrowing tale of a, of a lady who died from overtreatment. So how do you find all this information? Pretty easy. If you put Cornwall Formulary into your Google search, you will find chronic pain in Cornwall is at the bottom left of this page. Click on that and it will take you to the page with all of our work on. Uh, this has got downloads of the information for patients, information for clinicians, this presentation itself, also the opioid management plan and contract, and for your convenience, audio versions, so you can just click on a sound, SoundCloud link and sit back and listen to it all. Obviously, this is for patients to access as well, so show them how to get here. Thank you. So now you've got the alternatives to drug treatment, and this is where you come in, the GPs. We need you to help us to realise our goals. Now at this point I've got a feeling I know what you're thinking. You're thinking that this is a huge amount of information to get my head round. I'm overworked and underpaid. How on earth am I going to have the time to do this? Well, our best answer for that is to use CPD time to really study all of this and start using it in your day-to-day -day work. And as time goes on, that investment will pay back. There's a few other reasons why this is good for you and your practice to engage with. Firstly, it's good quality medicine. It's great CPD. There's some financial incentives that you'd have to ask the prescribing team for detailed information about, but it's from the GPPQS funding and also the enabling fund. And also from an academic side, this work hasn't been done before, the idea of deprescribing to primary care patients, and it's very exciting from that angle. What are the risks of not making a change? Well, overtreatment of chronic pain with opioids is a classic example of overdiagnosis. And also in the recently published National Inquiry into Suicide in Patients with Mental Health Problems, to quote, the highest rate of suicide is in Cornwall at 13.8 per 100,000 population, twice the lowest rate in southwest London, and opiates were the most common type of drug in self-poisoning. How are you going to go about making a change? Well, to be honest, that's for you to decide. You know your patient population best, but we've got a few suggestions. We think there are three groups of patients where the quickest wins could be made. Those on high doses, defined as more than 120 milligrams of oral morphine equivalent per day. Patients who maybe didn't realise the risk that they are running and the lack of benefit and are self-motivated to reduce. And also patients who've never been treated in the first place by the use of the opioid contract. There's lots of details in the information for clinicians document we've written. Regarding data sources, the prescribing team have done some fantastic work in um, displaying our prescribing behaviour. And I'm going to run you through some graphs now which show the whole county for the last financial year and the opioid load prescribed to the patients by drug and by locality. Coastal cluster, East Cornwall, Mid Cornwall, North Kerrier, Newquay Cluster, North Cornwall, Penwith, South Kerrier, Truro Falmouth, and everybody. Where's all of this heading in the future? We're hoping that prescribing changes can lead to improved social prescribing, like yoga, mindfulness ideas. Maybe we should get a standalone pain website like paininkornwall.org which would allow patients to upload and download information about maybe groups that they're running or ideas that they've had. We could even roll this out into other long-term conditions, patientsincornwall.org. And we're hoping that this will add a valuable academic addition to the understanding of opioid deprescribing. Please, 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 this is really important. Make sure you share this with all of your colleagues that you can. Here's a picture of a group of young enthusiastic GPs enjoying our work. You know how to get there. Google Cornwall Formulary, bottom left, chronic pain in Cornwall, Bosch. 
Finally, I want to do a plug for Cornell's Expert Patient Programme, which is six two and a half hour sessions, which is led by patients who themselves live with long term conditions and who've been highly trained. And this covers um, subjects just like chronic pain, sleeplessness, negative thoughts, anxiety, and depression, and is a, a really good way for, in, a, in a group environment to learn how to reduce the impact of pain on everyday life. Please feel free to get through to myself or to Keith with any questions or comments or ideas how we can improve things. We all wish you, your colleagues and your patients the very best of fortune during this very exciting quality project. Thanks for your attention.